What is good everybody today we are back with a discussion style video man this is something that i was thinking about the other day and i kind of touched on it in a short yesterday if you guys missed that short definitely go check that out maybe but this video really is going to cover all of those different things that i wanted to talk about but really 60 seconds isn't enough to kind of dive into all of the different lore that i want to get into and just talk about this man but the other day i was thinking you know this is something that's come up from time to time with my friends or collectors alike and i was thinking the other day you know what if mattel ever drops the wwe license or if they ever get out of the WWE license. They're no longer making WWE action figures. So one day this is going to happen. I highly doubt that we'll ever get some sort of lifetime contract or something. You know, I don't think every, you know, nothing lasts forever as they say. And I don't think that Mattel would make WWE figures for the next 50 years. I just don't see that happening. I guess it's possible. I don't, I don't know. You know, you never say never, I guess. But at the same time, nothing lasts forever. So, you know, I was thinking about it the other day. And honestly, I hope that nobody ever does pick up the license. But today we're going to dive into what that would possibly look like. And then some of the ramifications of that happening and I'll get into that in just a moment but I wrote down some notes we're going to dive into it and I just want to hear you guys thoughts down below you know I like to do the discussion style videos from time to time just to hear what you think and so I can feed it off of my thoughts and you know we can go back and forth in the comment section and just kind of listen to what you guys have to say the same as me but you know if, if Mattel dropped the WWE license that would of course mean that somebody else would have to pick up the license that means that Mattel would no longer be making figures so that means the ultimate edition line the elite line the basics all of that stuff would cease to exist. The line would end where it was and we would have from 2010 when they took over the license or January 1st, 2010 when their first figures were released, the Elite line, everything, all the way up to current day. Let's just say it ended at the end of this year. You'd have the, you'd have 14 years, 14 complete years or is it 15? I can't, I don't know, 10 all the way through the four. I don't know, I believe that would be 14 years. Nonetheless, man, let's start things off. You know, I think one thing that I think about and a lot of collectors think about is, oh, I'd be done collecting. I wouldn't collect anymore. It'd just be too much, you know, having to buy, rebuy things because, you know, if somebody else came in and took over the license, that would mean that they would have to remake a lot of characters or builds or looks of guys that they've already made before, that already exist, and would they even be up to the same quality? The parts would be different. They'd be a slightly different scale, I imagine. There's a bunch of different things that go into that right there, and I don't think that people would really want to go through that again. I don't think they'd want to relive that. Now, I know back in the day, Jax, you know, there was a ton of, ton of Jax collectors, and we've seen this over the time, you know, as a kid, you know, I grew up with Jax, and I grew up on the tail end of Bone Crunchers. I got to see some Toy Biz stuff. I got to see some of these things, but I really wasn't collecting full-time. I was just a kid, you know, playing with toys and, and finding figures and, and buying them and getting them for my birthday and all this, this, and that, and the other. I didn't know the releases that were coming out. I didn't know all these different things. Hey, you know, back then, dude, you're not really thinking about all the different things like the scale or the details completely. I was thinking about some of that stuff. We've touched on it before with the Stone Cold Steve Austin vest, right? It used to make me upset when they never put the vest skull on there and they'd fully complete his deco. It did used to bother me even as a kid. That really bothered me because I was like, this isn't what it looks like. So but nonetheless, you get what I'm saying. You get what I'm saying about that. But I don't think a lot of people would want to start over completely. And for myself, I'll, I'll touch on my take at the very end. You guys can let me know what you think. But you know, I think a lot of people would probably stop collecting. I feel like a lot of people would probably stop collecting just because they don't want to go through the hassle. Some people, you know, they say collecting is forever. It's, you know, it's what I do. It's part of what makes me happy, blah, blah, blah. But there's two sides of it. You know, would you dive into the new collection? and try to, you know, collect as much as possible out of the new line? Would you dabble in both? Would you go back and get some Mattels that you previously missed out on? I think those are different points that you could also make for, for sure. You know, if Mattel ever ended and you didn't want to collect, let's just say Hasbro or somebody got the line, you know, now Hasbro's making WWE figures. They'd have a new line with a new name and new logos and new team and all this different stuff. It's like, would I go back and finish off the Mattel collection? Would I go back on the aftermarket and try to complete those holes in my collection? Would I try to fill out what I'm missing and try to make my ultimate display or or not. And I think that a lot of people would do that as well. So I think that you'd probably have a percentage in each one, but I, I feel like there would be a lot of people that would continue over and spill over, and I'll get into that again at the very end. But let's look through some of the companies that potentially could make some of these figures. You know, if, if Mattel ever dropped the license, there's plenty of big time players in this space that would probably take over the license because it's very successful. It's a very successful line of figures. WWE, their toys and their action figures are very successful. Very good track record. They have a great base audience. It's a very big license to obtain, I would imagine. So let's start things off with Hasbro. If you guys don't know what Hasbro is compared to Mattel, Hasbro is the 
company that is responsible for making the G.I. Joe line. They're responsible for making the Marvel Legends line. And I do believe they also have some other lines as well, but those are probably their two biggest ones. Star Wars, I do believe they also make as well. So they have a lot of hands in different cookie jars. So if they picked up Mattel and so if they picked up WWE, that'd be another massive license that they have right there. But comparing Joe's to WWE figures or comparing, you know, Marvel Legends to WWE figures, I've always felt I collect a, a whole different bunch of lines. I do have a few G.I. Joe figures. I don't collect the line completely, but I do dabble. I, I pick up some of my favorite guys. I do have Sergeant Slaughter from the line. I do have Storm Shadow. I have some different guys like this. If I if I see a cool accessory I may like, I'll pick that figure up, whatever. And they're pretty damn good. They're pretty damn good figures, I'd say. A little stiff here and there from my experience. I feel like some of them are pretty small, you know, and, you know, sometimes they do. But when they do their deluxe figures, like the Hulk figures they make and some of the different figures they make are really impressive. They're very, very impressive, especially in, in articulation and detail. They're very good at that articulation and feel in hand in some of their figures is immaculate. So that would be something that I would like to see. But you could also say, oh, well, if they made WWE figures, they would have to downgrade the size. And I personally, a lot of people complain about the Mattel scale. I actually like the Mattel scale in that I like that it's its own unique deal because they're kind of bigger, you know, and I think they, I don't know, it, it like makes them feel more quality. Maybe that's just in my head, but when you can, they don't really increase in price either. So I talked about this before, but the value you get in an Ultimate Edition, the scale that it comes in and the plastic quality and the interchangeable hands and the entire package that you get for the price of $32.99 at retail is absolutely absurd when you compare it to other figures. There's figures and imports and stuff like that that go for 50, 60 bucks that don't have near the scale or near the detail or don't fear near as quality and Hand. And it's actually a testament to Mattel and how they do that. So I imagine that would somehow change because I don't know if you guys know this, but Hasbro also, I feel like a lot of the times, and it may be just because of the license fees, maybe WWE doesn't charge as much or whatever to make the figures or their cut or whatever it is that, you know, these toy companies have to stay afloat. So maybe that has something to do with it. But Hasbro, they'll throw a fully, like a repainted version of a character. Let's just say a Spider-Man. It'll have interchangeable hands and they'll charge 25, 26 bucks for it. When it's a smaller scale, it doesn't really come with any thing and it's just a repaint of a previously done figure maybe it'll have pinless joints things like that but i don't know man that's uh that's a that's a pretty steep price point i feel like you know probably the prices would probably possibly increase and i know we're in 2024 now and mattel has old molds that they can dip into and they could probably you know they can make different cuts because they have such a deep catalog and they have such a long history that they are able to do something like that so if it was completely to start over in the year 2024 2025 that would probably happen by design or by that would probably just be a result of of the line actually ending is if I had to make a guess right there. But that is something I wanted to touch on with Hasbro. As far as Jazzwares, I don't think they would ever pick up that license. Of course, they do have AEW. We've seen that before. And I don't think that they would get rid of AEW for that. And I doubt they would. I highly doubt they would make both at the same time. I guess it's never say never, but I don't see that. I, I don't foresee that. I wouldn't see that. I don't think that they would make both companies under the same umbrella. And then another company I thought about was Jada Toys. Now, Jada Toys has some really good figures in there. I don't know how long they've been going, but they have a really good catalog for as long as they've they've been going here and they are kind of smaller as well i think in some cases they're smaller than marvel legends figures if i'm not mistaken and i don't really own any of these but i have seen them in person i've held these in hand before i have gotten to see what they're about and they're very good they're very very good they are a little bit small like i said but the the feel and the articulation of these is immaculate they're very they have they're very strong in my experience from what i've seen and i think that they would probably knock wwe action figures out of the park now there's also different things about you know i i feel like it's difficult because mattel does a really good job of capturing the real life likeness of these characters and a lot of these other lines are doing comic book characters they're doing people that are not real uh, i know that star wars you know you do have some different stuff like that the mcu figures they're realistic and stuff like that but i think wwe and mattel they do a really good job of really capturing the life likeness of these people especially in the face sculpts from the different technology we've, we've seen over the years but i think that jada toys could possibly be somebody that could take over the license outside of that i really don't see anybody else that could really do it just out of those two, I think Hasbro and Jada would be the top two. And everybody else, unless I'm just forgetting one, maybe I'm just having a complete mind blank and can't think of anything right now. But I would imagine that those would be the top two candidates. But I, I pray to Jesus, like I said, that Mattel would never drop the license. Now let's get into what I would personally do if this were to take place. So let's just say tomorrow, Mattel announced that it, at the end of 2024, anything coming in 2025 is canceled. Anything that is coming in 2024, that will be the last line. Maybe Elite 150. 
15 or whatever will be the last line and then they are completely done. For me, I don't think anything would really change. I think that I would go back and pick up figures and try to add to my current Mattel collection. And also, I would keep things going because I think that if you were to think about, oh, am I going to dive into this new venture? Am I going to collect this new line? I feel like you'd need somewhere to go to find out if you're going to make that decision. So I think that I would continue to collect and to provide the information on these new figures. We would be giving you updates on news or anything we find out. Oh, they, they showed off a new prototype of the new company, you know, showing off these wrestling figures. How does it compare to Mattel? We'd have the first review video would be an absolute comparison with the Mattel and we would we would break all of that issue down. Kind of like we did with AEW and Jazzwares, right? When they first released their first waves. I remember we did a comparison video and we did WWE Elites versus AEW and Rival just to kind of show you the differences between the two. Probably would do something similar and then I guess it would be no different. We would see the news. We'd see the new figure reviews. We'd get to see all those different things and I'm sure Ringside Collectibles would obviously be one of the first companies that was pushing these figures out and I would be right there to review these things. So I don't think that I would stop collecting in any capacity. I don't even think my real passion for it would really drop either. I think it would suck. Just be, it'd be bittersweet because it would be, oh man, I'm excited for something new, but at the same time, I would be kind of devastated because I think Mattel makes the best wrestling action figures that have ever occurred. I talk about this a lot of the times. When we're getting Ultimates, when we're getting these different figures of different characters, I say, oh, this is legitimately the best Undertaker of all time. This is the best Kane that we've ever seen from any company ever. And people like to compare it to the old days or like different figures like that, but in terms of overall quality, price point, and likeness, and how does this compare to the guy that I see on my television in realistic form, Mattel does some of the most incredible stuff you've ever seen. So I did definitely want to get on here and talk about this. Just some different thoughts I had in my head, man. Anytime I'm laying in bed and I think I have an idea for a video and it hits me in the brain, I'm like, oh, dude, I got to take some notes right now because I got to go out there and see what everybody's thinking right there. But that would be my feel. I, I would imagine that a lot of people would not stop collecting, but I bet there would be quite a bit. I bet there'd be quite a bit that would just be like, nah, bro, I'm done. That's it. I can't. I don't have time for another line or I don't want to invest in another line. And I could see that. I could see that. But I wanted to get on here and touch on it anyway. See where your guys' heads are at and you can let me know what you think of all this down in the comment section below. But before we get out of here, a huge shout out to our Patreon members, man. Appreciate you, fellas. Thank you guys so very much for the support. As always, you guys are absolutely incredible. Hope you guys are having fantastic days out there, man. You guys have absolutely blessed me in the best way. And I appreciate all of you as I do every single day. I appreciate each and every one of you, man. But that is going to wrap the video. Leave me all of your thoughts down in the comment section below, man. I greatly appreciate it, but I'm getting the hell out. I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed one, and I'll catch you guys later.